I know that this is a bit of a personal question, but how many of us have had a friend or a family member who has had to battle cancer? Just the thought of a cancer diagnosis is enough to make my palms sweaty and my stomach drop a little. It's staggering to me to think that cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States, accounting for one in five total deaths every year. But while this is a grim fact, it's important for us to keep sight of the positive. In over a century of government-backed cancer research, the strides that we have taken have been transformational. From the first demonstration that radiation could be used to kill cancer cells in 1903, to the adoption of chemotherapies followed by targeted therapies, to today's focus on immunotherapies, doctors now have a wide arsenal of tools with which to combat cancer. But despite these advances, the question remains, why does cancer still take up such a large portion of this pie? A major reason for this is relapse of cancer following treatment. To better understand this, it's important for us to examine a timeline of relapse. Starting here, at disease initiation, a cancer patient will be diagnosed and then treated to achieve a remission. However, some cells can survive during this phase and remain completely undetected until they start to grow back out. This is termed relapse. Oftentimes, these relapses are no longer sensitive to our therapies, and when this happens, a patient will succumb to their disease. So, is there a way that we can target these few cells here and prevent the emergence of a relapse? This is the exact question that my research seeks to answer. I use cancer cells taken directly from patient tumors, and I model the disease in a dish. I follow this exact graph by treating these cancer cells with chemotherapy and then measuring thousands of genes in these few surviving cells. Using this approach, I've identified candidate targets that may play important roles in allowing these cancer cells to survive initial treatment. And importantly, I have found that if you block some of these targets, the cancer cells no longer, able, no longer regrow out. Now, as a graduate student, I've only been able to focus on one type of cancer. But I envision that this type of approach can be applied to the problem of drug resistance across all types of cancers. It's a little like playing chess against cancer, with the goal of always staying one step ahead of your opponent. By leveraging the technologies that we have available to us to understand how cancer responds to upfront treatment and then targeting those responses, my hope is that we'll eventually be able to force cancer into checkmate. Thank you.